And in terms of safety, um, you're, you're very much an advocate for safety. How do you view safety today and which areas need to be addressed? And that question is from Dennis Elliott in the US. The safety thing was, at that time, the greatest challenge I've ever had. I mean, we were losing so many drivers and nothing was being done. The, the cars themselves were overly fragile some more than others. The Lotus, for example, was particularly fragile and an awful lot of people died in Lotuses. Uh, I drove for BRM who were very solid and so was Ken Tyrrell with Matra and the Tyrrell Ford. But the danger was so obvious that things had to change and yet it wasn't happening. The largest issue was the racetracks themselves. There was no runoff areas, there's no gravel traps, there was no deformable structures. There was trees, there was drop-offs, there was, I mean, and we moved from a 1500cc car, one and a half litre car, immediately to a, a three litre car, 3000cc. And the difference in speed of entry to a corner, braking distances was so different the racetracks were never able to handle that because the racetracks, in many cases, were the same racetracks as before World War II. And the Nürburgring was an example, spa Francorchamps was an example. Silverstone was a disused airfield of World War II, but it was a really fast racetrack. And even then they didn't have runoff areas Woodcock Corner, where you drove in a, in a Formula One car 153 miles an hour through it in a drift. Um, but if you went off the road, there was only less than the length of this room. Uh, so you almost always went into sleepers, railway sleepers was what they had to keep the dirt upwards and therefore not get to the spectators. So. The cars were fragile and the racing tracks were too, too dangerous. So I started it and became the president of the, the uh, Grand Prix Drivers Association, GPDA. And we had a lot of power, but everybody was very sensitive about losing their drive in case they were pressured into not driving in a race. That was always a nervous issue for, let's say, not the top drivers. The top drivers were were more open towards it. But it had to be done. Um, Helen and I counted uh, 57 friends who were died, died in motor racing. Uh, a lot of them Formula One drivers, but clearly not all of them. And these were people that stayed with us, traveled with us, holidayed with us, I mean, really close friends. Um, and that was ridiculous. Uh, the swinging 60s and the 70s were hideously dangerous. I, I said, you know, motor racing was dangerous and sex was safe. Uh, I'm, I had a large part to play in changing the motor racing safety and some of you guys are responsible for the other. So it was a, it was a glamorous, colorful and exciting period, but it was a dangerous period to lose the Jim Clark. When Jim Clark died, I think it woke up everybody up. I woke everybody up because if Jim Clark got killed, how could you, because he drove so cleanly and so never off the road. But then, uh, you know, he died on the 7th of April, 1966. Mike Spence died on the same weekend. The, ne uh, the next month, the next month, Ludovico Scarfioffi did, and the same weekend of the next month, the fourth month, Joe Slesser died in uh, at the French Grand Prix and later Pierce Courage died in fire as did Schlesser. No fire extinguishers, not anything that would put a fire out. No marshals, they weren't properly dressed to go into a fire. The medical facilities were poor. Everything was wrong and the races never stopped. I mean, when Pierce Courage died, Jochen and I were racing together, and Jochen and I were both very good friends of Pierce, and we knew it was Pierce that had died. And we were driving through the flames, and the race was never stopped. And when Joe Slesser died, again, we were driving through the flames. It was a magnesium car, a Honda car. It was melting, and the fuel had already exploded, and it was running across the track with a camber of the, the circuit. 
and we were driving through it. And sometimes we're, in 1968, I nearly, Jackie X won the race, I think I was second. I nearly hit an ambulance in the spray. There was another car with spray in front and he had moved out and the ambulance was right there in front of me. I mean, things like that don't happen today and rightly so. So you could say it was glamorous, colorful and exciting, but it was hideously tearful going to the funerals, Jim Clark's funeral, big Dan Gurney in tears, uh, all of us affected by the, the, the parents, the, the children, the brothers and the sisters and sons and daughters in some cases. And nobody was doing anything about it. So it had to change, very unpopular change. Uh, when I closed the Nürburgring, uh, there was a GPDA meeting coming straight out of the memorial service of, of Bruce McLaren. And it was in the Dorchester Hotel. And I pointed out that we couldn't, you know, at that time we had started to do track inspections. So a, a Grand Prix driver would go and inspect each trap. I did Harama the day that Jim Clark died um, and was doing it when I was told. Jochen was sent to the Nürburgring because he was speaking German and they wouldn't change one thing. They wouldn't do one single thing. And we had this meeting and it was an emotional meeting with Bruce's memorial service and the reality of the, the, the fatality rate. And the drivers were saying, well, we might lose our drives if we say no. And the, Jack Brabham got the balance of yes or no, because I was going to resign from the GPDA if they didn't agree. And Jack Brabham stood up and said, we've got to go with Jackie, because we can't continue like this. And we closed the ring. I had death threats, uh, because the Eiffel region was almost dependent economically on tourism. And the Nürburgring, in those days we had 375,000 people at the Nürburgring, 14.7 miles on both sides of the racetrack. So it was a huge event for three, four days they would camp out. And we were just, I mean, it was ridiculous. But it changed. And now we have, this is safer than rugby. It's safer than equestrian for sure. Uh, and we have cars and apparel and, and we've got firefighters and we've got medical centers. Today, motor racing is an example to the world of how to get things done, even at the enormous, look at the, look at the, the Alonso accident in Australia. Look at, at Mark Webber's accident when he end over ended up in the air nearly as high as these Girders here, if you like. Um, it, so it's a changed world.